Today's episode is brought to you by Ritual. Ritual's out there with vegan-friendly multivitamins formulated for you. We'll talk about that. Also, uh, we're brought to you by Calm. Calm is here to help you relax. You totally should chill out. Everything is calm. We'll talk about that at more this podcast. <laughs> Let's jump into the show. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghost and Friend Dog. Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Long time episode of Cax and Crandall in the morning. Uh, I just, I just want to point out. I love the, the thing of like it's like calm. What? <laughs> I, I you know. I figured it's a good goof. It's you know. It's we got to shake them back awake. This is probably the first thing I listen to in the morning. Got to get them up. That's true. Oh, my God. Speaking of that, uh, man, my sleep has been wacky. I think because I've just been, like, doing a bunch of stuff and stressed. But now everything's like. What do you mean? Like, whoa, whoa. What do you mean? What's happening to you? I thought you are supposed to be my rock. What are you doing? Uh, Well, it's just like uh, this year in general, just like a lot of stuff happened. Not like bad some you know, something's bad, something's good. Just like a lot of a lot of stuffs happened. So I'm like, all right, but now everything's t- starting to calm down. But here's the thing: when I get sleep anxiety, that's like the worst kind of anxiety. I feel like I've mentioned this before, but what happens Wait, when what I try to sleep? sleep an- what do you mean by sleep anxiety? In what way? Are you like worried about sleep? What is going on with you? So what happens is. Normally, if I'm like, if I'm doing well, you know, I'd go to sleep, put my ASMR, like a podcast in, I'm asleep in like five to ten minutes or something. But sometimes, uh, you get the insomnia hits, and then you sit there and you lay there and you, maybe you fall asleep for like ten, twenty minutes, then you wake up and you're like, ugh, and you're like, what the shit, and then you lay there and you try to go back to sleep and you can't. And then you just lay there more, and then you toss and turn, and you're just like, Ugh. and then you look, and then like an hour's gone by, and you're like, what the shit? And then like an hour and a half's Oof. gone by, and you're like, what the shit? And then you start worrying, because you're like, oh god, am I even going to sleep? What if I don't get enough sleep? What if I wake up tomorrow, and like, I'm just super tired, and like, oh my god, what if like, I never get good sleep again? And then your body and your mind just start thinking of that, and then... That's what goes through your head? You- so yeah. the first thing you think of is like, <laughs> what if I never sleep again? <laughs> Because I heard of a, a thing of a documentary, like when I was 12, of some guy that had a disease where he couldn't ever sleep again. And that's, I know it's like one in like a billion people or whatever, but I was like, dude, what if not I have that disease now? You mean you get a lot of work done, that's for sure. <laughs> and then uh, and then I usually fall asleep. That's, that's how it works. wild. I don't have that at all. If I like wake up in the middle of the night, I'm like, oh man, how much time do I have left? <laughs> Still about three hours. All right, I feel like that's good, and I'll put my head back down and go back to bed. <laughs> I'll be like, all right, I'll see if I can make it. And then I'll wake up and be like, oh, I'm so tired. Why did I? Uh, and then, you know, just go on with my day. Well, sometimes I'm able to do that. Sometimes I'm not. Usually I can fall back asleep pretty easily, but sometimes I just have trouble falling asleep. But it's, uh, I've noticed. As I've like lowered my caffeine, it actually is easier to fall asleep. And sure. I think yesterday I had, like I had coffee at like uh, later in the day, so I think maybe that just the caffeine was still in my system or something. Mm. That actually, I, uh, I had wine late too, and I know alcohol can mess up your sleep. Alcohol knocks me out. That's my problem. If I drink, <laughs> I uh, I'm like a sleepy drunk. Do not. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm very good about knowing what my limits are because there's a certain point where, like, a switch flips and I am tired. I, I go from being happy to tired like real quick. You're REM sleep. You're just getting, like, stage one sleep or whatever. You're not getting the deep sleep. I mean, I try to deep sleep. Well, that's the problem. Alcohol, it inhibits that, so you can't. Well, you know what? If I drink enough... <laughs> <laughs> Knock my ass out, man. I uh, drink enough and I'll hit that. Deep I sleep. Drink it. Look, all I'm saying is I might have had a lot of wine today, Crendor. <laughs> I might have had a lot. What kind of wine? Uh we had a red that tasted like I don't even know how to it was it was bitter. 
It was like a it was like a an organic wine. I think made from grapes that tried to fight back. It was it was like it was a flavor. And then we had a uh, white wine that was like on the sweeter side, but it was very smooth. And then uh, a little bit of a rosé that was like pretty nice. We ran we ran the gambit of wines. Mamma mia! Yeah, I wish that I was could all. That. that was over the course of a whole day. So it was <laughs> oh like you know God. we weren't like down and but it was you know. We watched uh, the movie Rain of Fire. Have you ever seen the movie Rain of Fire? I have not. What is it? Holy crap. Imagine a movie. Let me just pitch you a film. All right. Imagine a movie <laughs> in the early 2000s oh, featuring okay, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. And I think maybe the last role he ever did with a British accent. <laughs> and <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> not just oh Matthew God. McConaughey. But buff-ass Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey looking ripped, shaved head, crazy <laughs> American guy. The premise of Reign of Fire is, in the early 2000s, the turn of the millennia, in merry old England, in London, they accidentally dig up dragons. And the dragons soon sweep over the earth and burn everything. And so the last people alive must band together to fight the dragons. And so Christian Bale is like this dude who leads a small group of English survivors. And Matthew McConaughey is like the leader, the general, I don't know, of a group of American <laughs> soldiers. And the two of them kind of like, we don't trust each other, but we have to work together. That kind of vibe. Yeah. It's crazy. The movie's crazy. Here's the thing. Visually, still holds up very well. The dragon CG, all of it looks really good. I don't know how or why it does. But it looks great, and uh, let me just say, wonderful bad film. Like it's, you know, it's one of those like very good but bad movies. Yeah. Oh, what makes it bad? Is it just the like cheesy lines or something, or like the not even the cheesy dialogue? lines? It's 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 so weird. It's like the pacing is strange. The uh, there's a moment later on that <laughs> I don't want to spoil that is phenomenal, but it's also like what the hell? There's it's it's very strange movie. It's like incredibly entertaining, yet you know that it's not good. I don't know how to describe it. Like it's a movie where you watch it, and you're like, damn, that was great. But you also know why it wasn't a big box office success. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I get I get that. Yeah, there's it's... something about it that's that's really like a great example is. You can tell that they shot scenes at different times. So all the outdoor scenes are clearly shot during one time, and all the indoor scenes are shot at another because Matthew McConaughey's buffness and beard size changes. <laughs> all the outdoor shots, he's super ripped, and like his shirt's always off and his beard's like longer and scragglier. But all in the indoor shots, he's always fully clothed, and his beard is like a little bit shorter for some reason. <laughs> Every time. And only after a while, when you really focus on it, you start to notice, like, wait a minute. This isn't correct. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was filming, but I've never seen him that buff. Like, he is ripped. It's crazy. And, um, yeah, it's 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 a weird movie. But, man, it is <laughs> it is super enjoyable. Well, do you see uh, there's a new Nick Cage movie with the pig? Yeah, called Pig. That's We've been talking about that for a long time. Everyone wanted us to watch that. Wait, we've been talking about it for a long time? Yes, every time. <laughs> literally every time we bring up Nick Cage and go to his IMDb, we mention Pig, the movie about a truffle hunting pig and how Nick oh, Cage is hunting for his pig. However, it's, it's all coming back to me now. Y the problem is, is that the movie trailer m does not make it seem like the cool action movie I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It seems like I mean, a guy just going it. through some shit. Like he's just <laughs> having a, he's like a midlife crisis about his missing pig. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was going to be like guns blazing like where's my pig? Yeah, I mean, I'll still watch it but uh you can you can hope and dream, right? I mean, yeah. Nick Cage, every Nick Cage movie's got some sort of it's got the Nick Cage vibe to it, but sometimes it's a little too slow paced, sometimes uh, it's a little too long, but sometimes you get like a mom and dad or a Wally's Willy World or whatever the shit it is. Do you think maybe we should do a watch party of Gone in 60 Seconds? Do you think that's <laughs> something we could do? I haven't seen that movie forever, and that's some quality Nick Cage. And like when Angelina Jolie was like a little crazy, 
You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. I feel like that'd be fun. In fact, I don't know if I've ever seen it. You've never seen God? Oh, my God. That's remember, the one where he's like, um, he's like, uh, let's ride. That whole scene, no one could see me doing it, but y'all knew what I was doing with my hands. <laughs> Have you seen the movie oh, that like, uh, let's ride? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. It. I've seen like the clips and I've seen the movie trailer, but I don't think I ever actually saw it. It is certainly a film. <laughs> All right, yeah, we definitely got to watch that. That's a, yeah. that's a must watch. Mm-hmm. There's so much stuff to watch. I'm, uh, yeah, very excited. Now that the world is slightly, yo, I was going to say the world's slightly returning to normal so I can watch movies again, but I don't know what's going on, man. Here in L.A., things are weird. Like, mm-hmm. people are no longer wearing masks. Some some people, because they, I assume, got their vaccine or just are lying. Either way, some people are not wearing their masks, but all employees still have to wear masks. So I feel weird because I'm seeing people go into stores with no masks, but I'm like, also, should I wear it because the employees are wearing it? Like, I just, I just don't know. There are no rules, man. There are no rules, and it's weird. I mean, here in Chicago, they made it so you don't have to wear masks if you're vaccinated. So, I mean, I haven't really. But at the same time, our cases are down, like, to 100 people a day, which I imagine is people being like, I'm not vaccinated, but I'm not going to wear my mask. And then, you know, yeah, they I go don't. out. I saw a, a tweet from a guy that I follow who was like, so I got COVID and uh, I'm vaccinated and uh, I've been like wearing masks to take care of myself. But basically, I just mean someone close to me did not get vaccinated and gave me COVID. And I want to let you know if I ever find out who it is, I'm coming for you. And I was like, damn. OK. <laughs> well, did he say how bad it was? Because I know if you get the vaccine, it makes it not as bad. Oh, he said he thought he had a cold. And, okay, it, and it yeah, was like he thought he had a bad cold, and he went to the doctor. And the doctor was like, "Bro, you got COVID." Yeah, he was like, a lot of people, what? A lot of people are like, "Oh, the code, the vaccine makes it so you can't get it." But really, it's just if you do get it, uh, which is less likely, it just makes it so you're not gonna die. <laughs> Essentially, you're having any like really bad after. Yeah. Time. Yeah, and so he was just upset that someone he's like someone I know gave me COVID, and I want to let you know I hate you. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "That's a vibe. I feel that." Tremendously. <laughs> like, if you want me to hang out with you, you best have gotten a shot, or I'm not even going to talk to your ass. <laughs> you can stay yeah. on the other side of the internet. I mean, it was like, I would do that any day over getting COVID. Like, what did I get? Right? I got fatigued, and then I got some soreness for like eight hours. That was like, yeah. It. I would so, rather, I'd rather get a shot and be like, well, I got sick a little, but at least I'm not dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now Oof. I'm just. I'm practically back to normal now. I'm just doing whatever. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of it's I, I, like 18 million something people in California got a shot, which is like pretty good. But I don't know. I feel like most of it's in SoCal, so I'm all right. But <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little worried. I think. Uh... Oh, second. Hold on. I was going to bring up a thing. By the way. I think it was people... like 60, 64% of all adults have at least gotten one vaccine shot. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I think I heard something like that, too. Which yeah, is, I you know what? Was like for 70. this country? For this country, <laughs> that checks out. There's usually a solid 33% all the time who are against everything all the time. Now, that's true. Yeah. There's uh, usually a solid 33 that are just like, F it. Don't tell us ever what to do. That's, that checks out. Sixty four percent checks out to that. Sure. That's uh Yeah, sixty four. Just get it up to sixty nine percent and it'll be nice. Yeah, if we just hit that sixty nine percent, it's a good meme and uh, you know, America can officially say sixty nine percent. I was gonna say, uh if anybody's got any sleep tips, leave your sleep tips below for sleep anxiety. Cause I feel like this just I know I'm, like, dialing it back now, but I feel like this correlates to the way we think. Because you think, when did we do that episode? That was, like, a year ago. Where Maybe, we, yeah, we it was definitely the, during 2020. Yeah, it was, like, the way we think. And it was, like, you think in wor- words or, like, you don't think in words. I don't remember how you think. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think? If good, some, good. Okay, let's say uh, you're trying to come up with an idea, okay? What goes through your mind? Um, I will sit there and I will think about the idea, um, you know, in writing the script that I'm doing for this video I'm making. Right. I, like, I'd have little flashes of inspiration. I'd write down little notes and then I would 
I sat down and started just writing a script and as it came out of my head, I'd go back and I'd redo it again and redo it again and redo it again until I had like, oh, well, this seems like it's something that I want to say. And, you know, whatever came to my mind is I thought through things and I would just be like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's change this. You know, well, like when, I would, you're, when you're thinking through things, like what are you doing? Like, are you picturing these things happening in your head? Um, I'm not sure I understand. What do you mean? Like. Picturing what? Give, like, like give I, me an example of like something that we're doing. All right. So let's say, uh, let's say in your script you're like, all right, this guy goes down to a bar and starts talking to a dog. All right. He just goes down to the bar, starts talking to a dog. Do you picture that in your head? Um, I don't. I would not picture the guy going to the bar. I just would understand the concept of a man going to a bar and doing all of that. Like, in my script, the scenes that I know I want to film, I know where I need to get those from because I've experienced those scenes, so I know where to find that stuff. Or the footage I want to use, if I talk about, like, a boss fight, I know where that, that footage is going to be. Or if, you know, I, I if I have an image of a, like, a, a scene that I want edited or something in my head, I can explain it and be like, oh, so there's, like, a joke where I talk about a snake tail and... The goof is that eventually it's, it's like just a snake tail wearing armor. And so I just like described it. But what I found out is when I said what I was thinking to my editor, he looked at me like I was a crazy person because he didn't understand what I was saying. So I literally had to break it down. He's like, oh, that makes sense. So I feel like, and, I, and this happens to me all the time, where I have something in my head. And when I describe it, because I probably didn't visualize it in a way that's like the ripe red apple sat upon the table its wood was a dark brown because they don't do that i'm just like, yeah so it's like an apple on a table right and then like it, you know it's just like a brownish table and then like uh the camera comes in gets close with the apple and then the apple like uh, you know it's just like an apple and i'm sure people are like well what can you specify and i don't do that because in my mind the specifications are already there and i didn't have to like think it up it just existed that just i can't i can't really <laughs> You just don't see anything. No. I uh, Even when like, talking to you right now, everything I'm doing is reactionary. I'm not thinking. So the things that are coming out of my mouth are not being thought out. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> right, I just i well. am talking at you. So in my mind, as soon as, <laughs> let me tell you what I thought as soon as you said what you were saying. You were uh -huh. like, there's a snake. And instantly my brain went to, like, you talking about the Zoldrak snake or wherever that Zool place the gun, is. It literally Gundrak. is the Gundrak snake. Yes. That's yeah, exactly so what I'm talking about. I literally pictured you standing up at BlizzCon showing the snake, and then I pictured the snake, and then you said it had armor. So I just threw, like, plated armor onto him. But I could only see, like, the back end, because, like, that's all you can see in the Gundrak thing. And here's the thing. The video, that part of the video is literally what you're describing. So when I talk about it, we show the clip of me at BlizzCon, like 12 <laughs> years ago, Jesse, at BlizzCon. It's so weird. Oh, my God. I look like a fat-faced baby boy. <laughs> um, 12 years ago at BlizzCon, and then uh, the the next clip is literally a sna that snake tail because the goof is – and wow, I asked them what it was, and they're like, we don't know. And I was like, if this was Final Fantasy XIV, that Snake Tail not only would have had a purpose, but would, would have been like a main character for two expansions, right? Right. And, and so the joke is like, when I say that, then it's like the Snake Tail, the actual tail, but in armor, right? It's literally right, so. what you visualized. That's what we did, except I didn't visualize it. I just knew <laughs> that's what I wanted it to be without having it in my head. Which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I think like it's I don't because that's the only way I can think. So when that's like the only way you can think, it's hard to think how someone else thinks. I mean, I will talk to myself in my head. Like but you I'll don't say just picture things. No, I don't picture anything. Like I'll say stuff to me, but it isn't like you can do it just or anything like that. It's literally just like all right, this is what I got to do today. I got to do this, this, this. Oh, this is a good idea. Remember that shit. Like, I'll have an idea. I'll be like, okay, remember that. Remember that idea. And then I'll try to get it written down as soon as possible because let me tell you, I will forget that idea. <laughs> <laughs> With, without fail, I will always forget the idea. So I have to write it down as soon as possible. In the, all right, in the YouTube episode, I'm going to find that old episode and link to it just so people can go back and listen to it for like an hour. But here's what I was thinking. This is what brought this all on. 
I was outside, and we were taking a walk at night. Uh, me and Toaster, when we were just walking at night, and I was like, it's crazy how I come up with ideas, because I just picture stuff, but I'm like, I don't get how someone like Jesse comes up with ideas then. Because here's what happened. In my mind, I was like, alright, I'm going to come up with ideas right now. So I look up at the stars, and I'm like, dude, what if those stars could like haul other stars? So I was like, I pictured in my mind a star like taking a rope and he goes over to a star and he like lassos another star and he's like, come on, and he just starts pulling him along. But then the trees could soak up their star power. So the trees are like, and they have like this aura and they suck the stars into the tree. But then the rocks steal the star power from the trees or they kind of share the star power because they sit next to the tree. And it's like a weird photosynthesis thing. And I thought what all that up. What the hell and, like, did you just say? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, you said the stars pull the other stars, like, tow them, and mm -hmm. that the trees suck up the star juice? Yeah. I mean, that's the what trees. a sun is, technically. <laughs> so that's kind of like photosynthesis. I think that's what she I mean, said. She's like, isn't that just photosynthesis? But I'm like, yeah, but this is, like, the real living things now. Like, this is a star, and he's trying to haul the other star, but he's getting sucked down into the tree. Your wife is a patient woman, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's what I do. It's like I create these things in my head where I just see everything playing out. And then once it all plays out in my head, I'm like, all right, now I can write it down. Which is why I I've think never... with my anxiety stuff, when, I, when I'm laying there trying to go to sleep, in my mind I'm picturing, like, I can see myself tomorrow. There I am. I'm just, like, sitting there, like, oh, God, I feel so tired. I wish I slept. And I'm like, how do I change that? How do I do this? I, gotta, I, like, I picture all these things in my head. I, I think maybe that's part of it. Like, I can't picture tomorrow. Even when you were trying to talk about it right <laughs> then, I was like, can I see myself tomorrow? I cannot. What I saw when I thought about tomorrow was the ad read for a future <laughs> ad. I, like, was all I was like, I was like, let me think about this. And then I, like, was like, no sugars or GMOs. Oh, right, right, major <laughs> allergens are not... Oh right, yeah. Like that's that is that is what I saw. I couldn't picture myself tomorrow. I pictured the only thing that was in front of me, which was my screen. That's insane. That's crazy. I, the, yeah, but like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> there's never been a part of me that's like. And then the the stars lassoed the other stars, and then they fed the trees. I would never ever think that <laughs> ever. It would never be an option. Which is why I'm I'm glad I have you in my life because I would never experience this. I would never think this ever. It would I never think, cross my mind. I think that's why when David Lynch talks about brainfish, I kind of get it, but you don't get it because <laughs> like in my mind, I'm picturing those brainfish. I'm picturing yeah. everything, and I'm like, all right, I kind of get it. That's like what I do. I don't, uh, I don't do brain fish. I do, <laughs> like, I'm, here's the thing, but maybe I do do brain fish. Like, I will say the first thing that, ma here's, maybe this is what it is. Mm. You're a brain fisherman. And right. you, oh boy, this is, this is <laughs> the Crender. We, we are going down the Crendor rabbit hole now. <laughs> you are a brain fisherman, and mm. you fish up things from the brain river, right? You're <laughs> right, at the shore. Yeah fishing up stuff and yep. you're taking your time and you're sort of reeling it in you have the right bait and you have all this stuff and when you get it you're like oh what a great idea i am like a brain bear and that <laughs> i sit at the waterfall and wait for the fish to come jump up and i grab it with my mouth at the last minute <laughs> because that's how i get ideas they just come to me really quick it isn't even like i fish it up it just oh yeah this is a joke or oh, yeah this is a thing or, yeah this. and i just really quickly very quickly go through it and I, I'm only reactionary. 99% of what I do is reactionary. Like, I think you're right. I think you're onto something. Yeah, you just you just wander down to the river and just pick a fish. And you just do like, here we go, got one. I'm like, all right, if I just go to this spot, I might get a good fish. But you got to go at like 2 a.m. when they're really biting and when it's raining. That's when they really get there. And then you just, but you, you just walk over. You're like, ah. I, think I honestly think that's it. I think that's, Wow. You know I'm what? A, I'm like a brain bear. I, understand. I think I understand how you think now. See? Look at that. <laughs> well, all we had to do was connect to the river of thought, and here we are. <laughs> David Lynch. That's all we needed. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of, like, imagination Perfect. stuff, I found an article on, like, why we stopped playing with action figures when we were kids. Or, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's... <laughs> what do you... What? <laughs> no, I'm not... You know, I'm not... I'm just... 
you know, I just know a guy who who, who colors various dinosaur creatures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know well, that you ever stopped is what I'm saying. That's the point is like when we get older, we still enjoy doing it, but it's like a different type of thing it becomes like mastery of it and like creates like all this stuff when you're a kid you're just like this is batman he flies around like i don't sit in my basement like i used to being like all right spider-man here we go <laughs> there are some adults that still do that but i don't i'm not one of those i paint my intricate models of warhammer that's very different but you do video games which i think is just a more interactive version of like all right spider-man pew 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 and, and here's the thing. I think everyone has that kind of thing. Everyone has a thing that is a replacement for something they loved as a child, even if they insist it is not true. Uh, Yeah. No, I agree with that. Because Just, there's... Everyone. Everyone has it. They have to. I refuse to believe otherwise. Yeah. Because it's like... Well, the reason... Okay, so I was going to mention the article. So the article says, uh, at first, when you're like a kid... Your toys help you develop through the stages of, like, development. So, at first, a toy lion is just, like, a toy lion. But then later on, you might use it to be like, oh, now he's, like, the Hulk's mount and he can ride around and blah, blah, blah. And you're, like, develop little stories for your toys. So, it's like your brain is being like, oh, okay, I'm able to, like, create things. It's not just some toy now. Now it's like right, a right. mount for the Hulk or like shit like that. So it's really like why we enjoy doing it as kids is because it's like developing our creativity. Yeah. And I, I think that's absolutely true. The Everyone I've ever known uh, who had any type of figure or doll or whatever it was never about you know, Barbie wasn't Barbie, right? Barbie mm -hmm. was you know, something else that then, even if you were a brother and your sister had a Barbie, that wasn't Barbie. That was like someone else that related to your action figures, right? Or yeah. if it was still Barbie, it was like, I'm secret ninja Barbie, right? Like, it was never, <laughs> yeah. it was never what it was supposed to be. That, that was the, most of the fun. All the toys you got as you messed around with them. Like, a great example is I got a board game for Christmas one year. And it was, it, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a D&D &D board game where it came with little figures. I never once played that game like it's supposed to be played. <laughs> I would just play with the little figures that it came with because they were like oh, badass yeah. barbarians and monsters and shit. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, let's go. I would never, I, I still couldn't tell you how to play that game. No clue. <laughs> but I had great adventures with it. Oh, yeah. No, I even remember, like, when we played, like, when I first played Warhammer when I was 12, I wouldn't know that shit. There's, like, a 300-page book. I would read through it, like, this is neat, but I couldn't tell you, like, one thing about the rules. So we would just play, like, my orcs hit you on the, if you roll a five. I'm like, we did it, all right. We just, like, knock them over. And then yeah. I would be like, I'm a draw thing. And then, down the line, you're like, what if I play it properly with my developed brain now? You know? That's the, that's the I mean you start hitting that stage. Can I tell you the most <laughs> like thing I did as a kid? All right. <laughs> Swear to God. So I loved Mega Man, but at the time, I didn't own a Nintendo. Mm. Uh, my parents were like, there's no reason to get one. Your uncle says a Super Nintendo's coming, right? So <laughs> they wouldn't buy me a Nintendo because they told me to wait for Super Nintendo. Admittedly, I was the first kid in the neighborhood to have a Super Nintendo. It was pretty great. But until that time, I had no consoles. Nothing. And uh, I'll never forget that I still got Nintendo Power because I wanted to be, like, in on all the Nintendo stuff my friends were in on. And in Nintendo Power, every time a new Mega Man game would come out, which I loved but could never play, all the artwork from those games and all the bosses and stuff were in the Nintendo Powers. And so what I would do is I would trace all the bosses, cut them out, and on the pieces of paper that I drew and colored in the different <laughs> characters to make my own Mega Man adventures with just <laughs> pieces of paper. <laughs> oh my so, god. Uh, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Go Mega Man. <laughs> honest to god, that's what it was. And everyone had like a voice and like Mega Man and I had Rush and I had Roll and I had like all the different people and then straight up just 
all the different bosses. And they'd be like, it's me, Dr. Filey. Watch out, Mega Man. <laughs> right? And I'd do the whole thing, but it'd literally just be like crappy printer paper. I remember being a kid and being mad at my one friend because I was like, you're supposed to be Mumbo from Banjo-Kazooie, not this character. I don't know why, but I was just really mad. Well, that's, I think that's a part of it as well, is when friends come over and their idea of what those <laughs> yeah. make-believe characters are is different from yours. You're like, yeah. no, that's not G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, your worlds clash and you're just like, get this guy out of here. Yeah, uh, yeah, you find out who your real friends are very quickly. <laughs> get out of here. In fact, Ninja I remember... Turtles don't do that. I was so into sports that I just developed my own sports leagues that I would play with myself. So I'd like take the football and like throw it to myself and I'd be like, oh, he scores. Or I'd like toss a like little wiffle ball golf ball up and hit it like I was playing baseball. And I'd be like, oh, and I would keep track of my stats. You was... and I are living that <laughs> only child life is what Hell is, yeah, what is happening. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, yeah, I did that too. I would always <laughs> score the winning home run every time, every time. <laughs> but I'd be role playing as all the various like sports figures. So I'd be like, oh, this is Sammy Sosa up to bat now. And then I'd bat, and I'd like, it was like I was playing in my own league I created. Now I'd do that while watching TV of actual sports. So That's what I'm like, saying. I think all that stuff, like fantasy leagues, and even just being on a, like, rooting for a team. Most people who root for a team are like, I am a part of this organization. It's like, no, oh, you're yeah. not. You're just, they don't know who you are, but you feel it because that's kind of, it's that little holdover from childhood, which just goes to show. I think this is true, and I'm going to say it because it is. Being a kid was way cooler than being an adult. As a kid, <laughs> you wanted to be an adult so badly, and now that I'm an adult, she sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I'd rather be a kid any day. It's also, uh, well, with, like, sport, it's also a sense of, like, belonging. Like, yeah, I'm part of the team. We're part of the team. It's like right. a family. It's a group. And so it's just like, we need to make the trade. Why aren't we making the trade? Um, I've read a lot of sports forums. There's, yeah. Uh, I mean, just listen to any sports radio. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. Okay, speaking of that. So I often listen <laughs> I to sports here we go. radio. Yeah. <laughs> just because I, like, you know. So I turn it on. The best is the best callers are like the anything past like eleven p.m. You get like the people calling in drunk, uh, and this one guy, I just put it on at like six p.m. and he calls in. He's like the Cubs. You know what the Cubs need? They need some high heat. They need high heat and they need it now. And he's like, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, what are you drinking? It's six p.m. Kevin, are you drinking? And he's like, Cubs need high heat. Do you hear me? They need high heat. And they're like, Evan, I, you need to get help. All right? You need help. And he's like, I don't care what you say. The Cubs need high heat. And then they, like, cut him off. And he's like, "The has anyone here heard of from Kevin before? And they're like, ah, Kevin is apparently a frequent caller at the 1 a.m. radio. <laughs> so, uh, but he listen, Kevin's kind of right. The Cubs do need some high heat. I, I, I was agreeing with him. He wasn't really going in depth about it though. <laughs> I mean, he just needs high heat. <laughs> and then my everyone favorite does. was uh, one time I turned on like two a.m. and he was like, "This guy was like a super meatball," and he was just drunk. He's like, "If they're gonna make him play on the Bears, it, you, what are you teaching? Stop! What are you doing?" And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "I just uh, you think is these guys? I just don't know what they're doing." And I was like, this guy in a span of like 20 seconds has said literally nothing. He just says, I don't know what they're doing. And I think he just doesn't know what they're doing. I was honest to God about to ask, <laughs> why is everyone calling drunk? But then I realized it's Chicago. So I'd be like, what oh, else yeah. are you going to do? <laughs> it's like, you know, literally like it'll go from like, it's like a slightly, <laughs> it's like a, it's not as bad as like New York and Philadelphia, but it's like, it's, you know, bordering up there. Where it's just like, one day they're like, dude, Matt Nagy, best coach i ever seen. He should win coach of the year. And then the week they lose, they're like, this guy should be fired. Honestly, I could call a game better than him. And it's just every week, just alternates. I mean, being on the internet, uh, I understand that. I understand <laughs> that you cannot please anyone all the time. It's, you know, or whatever the hell the phrase is. Look, like I said, I've been pleasing myself with wine tonight. So, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um... 
Oh yeah, so then uh really just <laughs> going back to the article, you uh, <laughs> <laughs> you reach your preteen teenage uh years and then you essentially uh start to get more into relationships and just forming friendships or romantic relationships whatever. Uh, and then you go from being like, yay, Batman, to like, girlfriend? <laughs> or like, whatever. And then, uh, you know, you start hanging out with your friends more, right? That's when you start like, like, 7th, 8th grade. You're like, I'm gonna go hang out. Unless you're me and you're playing video games. Uh, so that's why they said at this stage, development is called the formal operational stage where you can use complex logic, not just A causes B, but also that B causes C and C causes D and might relate back to B, and you have an improved ability to form abstract thoughts. So essentially, your brain getting in the way of being able to just enjoy the toys. Sure. And so you kind of So what happened to you, exactly? Uh, well, you hit nostalgia, and you're like, man, remember when I was a kid, and it was great, and you just played with toys, and then you start playing with the toys again, and you're like, yeah, but now I can, like, master painting, and I can yeah, now I have them. money, and now, now I, I can do money. buy my own toys. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I get it. I get it. And I think that's why people do that. It's like why people get back into cars, because, you know, they like cars, but I'm like, no, oh, remember Matchbox cars, and then they're like, now I got my garage filled with cars. And then people get back into action figures, probably it's like, I'm a collector of action figures, and I have, like, a pristine 1974 Batman exclusive. Like, people just get back into it because they're just trying to relive their childhood in a way, or just kind of have fun like they did back then. I was going to say, none of that really corresponds with my dad but then i realized i'm a liar because that man i remember in his 40s when he had a game boy that mm. man had a game boy he had tetris we would link up and we would play all i'm saying is there was a time that man had a game boy <laughs> usually i don't ever think i'm like what does my dad do for fun besides walk <laughs> uh, i don't know and i was like oh he has fun well i mean does he, is he, did he walk as a kid? I don't, I mean, I think he, I don't know. I don't know if that was, here's the thing. If I'm about, I'm about to get a call from my parents, they're gonna be like, actually, your father was a huge kid walker. As a kid, he would walk everywhere, and now it's full circle. I don't know. I'm, I bet I'll find that nonsense out. <laughs> yeah, you gotta find out now. They'll definitely tell you. Did they ever tell you about other, there was like something with like stories from something. I don't remember. It was like three weeks ago. What? <laughs> no, it's not worth it. I don't, I, dig dig deep to your brain fish uh, and figure out what the hell you were uh, talking about. Vacations. <laughs> vacation what about stories. Vac when we were talking about childhood vacation. Yeah, what about it? You're like, my parents will probably tell me some story I forgot about. Did they ever tell you any stories they forgot about? I don't think so. I don't remember, though, honestly. Yeah. That's how I get through life, is I don't remember what <laughs> happens a week ago. It makes life much easier to not picture tomorrow and not remember a week ago. If anything, living in the moment is, like, doing pretty good for me. I'm a lot less stressed than I should be. I wish I could just flip a switch. Honestly, I feel like that's what meditation helps you do, is being able to go back and forth, but I need to do that again. Well, oh, look at you. Look at, look at you. that. I didn't even try to segue that. Please set it up. <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, you keep talking about trying to sleep. You keep talking about meditation. Gang, seasons are changing. The temperatures are getting warmer. Flowers are blooming. Daylight savings. Springing forward. Falling behind on sleep. All this nonsense. Whew. Let me just say, your mental health is probably taking a toll. You probably feel like you're still stuck in last year like... Everyone does right now. Well, oh, yeah. Calm is here to help you with that mental reset, especially you, Crandor, because it can help you Ooh. in both your day and nights. Calm is the number one mental wellness app with the tools to help you improve the way you feel. Clear your head with guided daily meditations. Improve your focus with Calm's curated music tracks. Drift off to dreamland with imaginative sleep stories. All of them are great. I can, I mean, they literally have things read by famous celebrities, if that's like your jam. Or they have people who just have those voices, you know what I mean? They're like, and now I'm reading. There's this one lady, she reads like about riding a train. Oh my God. 
Her voice <laughs> is like the perfect Jesse sleep voice. Uh, it knocks me out all the time. Also, they also have episodes of Bob Ross on there. If you want to listen to those, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but they also have you know daily meditations, which I do every day. It's like ten minutes tops, and I will just like wake up, pop it on immediately because they're usually up by the time I get up, and I'm just like, let's do this every day without fail. And you can check it out too if you go to calm.com. Slash Cox, you'll get a limited time offer for 40% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming and new content is added every week. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds. You can sleep more, stress less, live better with Calm. Right now, again, if you are listening right to now to my voice, Calm's offering you a special limited time promotion for 40% off a Calm premium subscription. That's calm.com slash Cox. C-A-L-M dot C-O-M slash Cox for 40% off. Unlimited access to Calm's entire library. Also today we're brought to you by Ritual. Ritual is a clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin that's formulated with high-quality nutrients and bioavailable forms your body can actually use. We've talked about this before on the show. They literally say where every single thing that's in one of these pills is from. And you can just look it up and be like, oh, interesting. There's no sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, or artificial colorants. Plus, it has this like fresh taste and uh, delayed release capsule design to make it easier for your stomach and stuff. But like, also when you open the jar, every time it smells like, uh, I don't even know, like minty fresh is the best way to describe it. Ooh. I take them daily, uh, two a day, my people. It, it does it for me. Uh, it's a solid multivitamin. And they come in a bunch of different varieties for, you know, guys, gals, the old, the young, right? Teens. <laughs> It's a multivitamin the way it should be. It contains key nutrients and forms your body can actually use to help fill gaps in your diets. No shady extras, none of that other stuff. And it, what's great about it is you are, again, doing it in a way that uh, is from a visible supply chain, right? It's something you can see and feel comfortable about putting in your body. Your multivitamins are then delivered to your door every month with free shipping, always. You can start, you can snooze, or you can cancel your subscription at any time. And if you don't love Ritual, within that first month, they'll refund your first order. All you gotta do to get yourself all them nutrients without the BS is go to ritual.com slash cox, and you get 10% off during your first three months. That's ritual.com slash cox, 10% off, first three months, Ritual.com slash cock. Start your ritual today. All right, Crendle, let's go chat to Captain Scott. Oh, that's not how you say that. In the sky with Crendle, I guess. Hey, I, hey um, <laughs> we're, up in, we're up in the sky. Uh, we're flying around. I just finished my coconut water, uh, which, by the way, I love coconut water now. That's my new thing. I've moved on from yogurt. That hurts. That hurts the tummy now. Now I just take my probiotics through pill form, and now I'm drinking coconut water. Uh, specifically, Harmless Harvests coconut water. So, like, if they want to sponsor us, oh, my God, I'll, I'll drink, like, so many of these coconut waters. You don't even know. Uh, this trap got there. Back to you. I hate coconut water. What? <laughs> Sorry, sponsorship. <laughs> How do you I'm not a fan. Coconut water? I don't know. I don't like the taste. It tastes funny to me. I'd rather just have normal water. Actually, Toaster Woman doesn't like coconut water either, but I do, and I don't know why. It's got, know, you know. Something about it. But it's uh, it's got your calcium. It's got your potassium. You got 10% of your daily potassium in one serving. Phosphorus, it magnesium. It doesn't taste right. It's something about it that's funky. Well, I'll tell you what. Harmless know. Harvest coconut water. This is some good <laughs> coconut water. <laughs> you know what? If they want to send us some free ones, I'll give it a shot. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be great. Yeah, there you go. Dude, I'm telling you, this stuff. I just drank a 32 fluid ounces of coconut oh water. Oh, God. Uh, well, half the day. I drank, like, a pint of it today and a pint yesterday. Damn. I love you are, stuff. You are coconut powered. <laughs> You're doing great. And then I just bought some more. I love it. 
I need more coconut water. Okay, well, I guess you can <laughs> keep drinking while we do the weather. Well, I can't because um, I drank it all. Oh. <laughs> well, weather. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so on the weather, let's kick it back to the last podcast. Crendor isn't crazy. Pineapple is rough on the old gums. That's what I'm saying. I don't, uh, um, I feel like we shouldn't discuss that anymore. It seems like a lot of well, people agree with you, and I think they're crazy. <laughs> crazy. Well, crazy. I don't want, I don't want to make fun poll. of our audience. I don't want to do that. I believe in the poll, it was, uh, I think like 30% agreed with you or something. Well, those people I like to call the strong, and we <laughs> will inherit the earth when everyone has died from pineapples. Uh... The Great Pineapple Purge. <laughs> <laughs> the most delicious purge. Uh, is there a place called Pineapple? No. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, Ananas? Isn't that like uh, what the other rest of the world calls it? Ananas? Ananonos? What? Isn't Ananas? that what it is? Ananas? Ananonos? Ananonos? What? Pineapple is not called pineapple in most places. Ananas. Ananas. Anana. Oh Anana my god, Anas. you're right. Anana. That's what I'm saying. That sounds like a banana. Maybe. Anana. Anana. <laughs> Anana. There's a picture of a creepy pineapple walking around. You see that? <laughs> Look at that. Oh, Jesus. It didn't even link right. Just linked a bunch of... I don't know what it linked. This I work? like this one that's a pineapple in like a little flamingo floaty. I think that's pretty nice. Yeah, maybe there's like a Nanana City. Uh, city. Inter know. There's a Nananas. A Nananas Kuwait City? What? Anana. Oh, it's a bar. Oh, it's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in uh. Kuwait. Okay, I thought that was like, what? No, it's a bar. Yeah, Kuwait not in us. Yeah, we got nothing. Um, let's see. We've we also do, got. Uh, let's say we, we could, could do Kuwait City. Kuwait. Ku I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, but I could just pick some ones. Uh, <laughs> let's go to. <laughs> I bet Kuwait City is lovely, Crendor. I bet it's lovely there right now. Yeah, I'm sure it's lovely. Uh, we've got. <laughs> A place in Honduras called Yoro, where once a year there's a big rain of fish, and between May and, May and July, people gather the fish to eat them. And it's considered a miracle, and nobody can explain it. They just rain from the sky? I guess. Fish rain. What? It's totally true. What the hell? Yoro, Yoro, Honduras. How to see the fish rain? 72 degrees in Yoro, 3% uh, chance of rain through 12 a.m. You got your high of 72, low of 67, humidity 88%, 29.97 inches of pressure, 5 miles visibility. You got 2 mile an hour winds, 68 on the dew point, 0 on the UV, moon phase, waxing gibbous. You got your hourly forecast. It's uh, a lot of 70s. Let's drop the 10 day. You got 66 tonight, Monday, 91, 88 on Tuesday, 88 on Wednesday, 88 Thursday, 85 Friday, and pretty much a lot of 80s and a lot of PM thunderstorms pretty much every day. Uh, so rainy and hot in Yoro Yoro, but I don't, I don't know about fish rain. Yo, this is wild. So it's been confirmed in, in the 1970s, National Geographic had a team there that witnessed the event live. And basically, the thought process is every May or June since the 1800s, a large yearly storm rolls through and has, like, crazy heavy rains. And I guess once the storm passes, there's just fish on the ground. And so the legend yeah. is the fish fall from the sky, but there technically is no actual – no one knows if it's – because waters rise or the wind or if they get sucked up by a squall. Like, I don't know. I'm reading about it right now, and it seems pretty like we, do, we don't really know. <laughs> they just show up, and sometimes. <sighs> Didn't we read a random fact about, like, the fish tornadoes? But I don't know. There's no tornadoes, though. I mean, tornadoes can suck up fish. That's true. Yeah. 
We we had that as our. But this seems fact like the, the photos of this make it seem like this is a lot of fish. People are saying maybe it's flash flooding. Like I'm looking at it right now. This is the photos are crazy. Let's That's incredible. See. Fish rain, fish fall from sky. Oh my god, that is crazy. Yeah, just if you Google Euro Honduras fish rain. Wild. Yeah, there's just so many articles about that. Uh, this is fascinating stuff. I don't know how it works, but I it's fascinating. Annual rainy season comes with fish. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> So weird. You learn something new. Huh. Well, I guess. And it relates. And it relates. Sorry, Kuwait. I, 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 vouch, I was trying to vouch for you, but this relates to what we were talking about before. About brain oh, yeah. fish. This is rain fish. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. It all yeah. ties back. All ties back. Uh, also, I found this, p <laughs> this picture of like fish rain on a farm. There's just a cow that's like, oh, it's raining <laughs> fish again. I, I know, I know, I see that, but I just saw the <laughs> the, pineapple the pineapple creature, and I am <laughs> shocked. I'm shocked that I'm going to use that as the thumbnail for this episode. Oh yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, <Damn laughs> it's, it's the weather. All right, and sports, sports. Uh, over at the old sports desk, we got sports. Over in basketball, the NBA playoffs are all set for the final four. We got the Phoenix Suns up on the Los Angeles Clippers 1-0 in that series, and then the Atlanta Hawks will take on the Milwaukee Bucks in that series. Uh, I'm rooting for the Bucks and the Suns, personally. I like both of those teams more than the Hawks and the Clippers. Uh, over in hockey, Vegas beat Montreal in overtime, series tied at two, and it uh, looks like New York and Tampa Bay uh, also tied at two after the Islanders beat the Lightning. And the uh, baseball's still going. Uh, the Tokyo Olympics are, I think they're, like, getting started now. For, like, We're almost there. Yeah, it's coming It's coming along. Eventually, we'll yeah. get there. It's a month away, and I believe they're, like, all reporting in or something. So, it's happening. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. And, I mean, that's, you know, it's pretty much sports. Okay, what is our weird fact that you probably just found of the day? Woo! Um, all right, let me just scroll through and pick a random fact here. Here we go. Sea lions can dance to a beat. Sorry, what? Sea lions can dance to a beat. But, like, <laughs> you know what? All right, I I, I'm just going to say I accept this. I accept that people have tried to make sea lions dance to a beat. So, like, all right, yeah, I accept it. There are only two mammals on Earth with the proven ability to move their bodies in time with an external beat. Humans, though not all humans, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and sea lions. <laughs> when researchers at the University of Santa Cruz rescued a stranded sea lion in 2013, they found that she was very smart and she was even able to learn how to dance. Though parrots can also keep a rhythm, it was previously thought that only animals capable of complex vocal learning could do this. I... That's it. I don't know that's... Like, I've seen other things... I don't know. I've seen, like, other creatures dance to a beat, right? Uh, I had to, like, a dog or something. I had to have. I've had... I had to have. <laughs> I don't now know. Now I'm going to have to search for that. I'm gonna, I don't know that I believe this one. <laughs> Only sea lions? I don't know. This is true. <laughs> There's got to be a dolphin somewhere that, like, wiggles to the beat, right? They probably get it. Mm, uh, me, though. I don't know. Are they actually wiggling to the beat, or are they just wiggling because they're being told to? Great question. Yeah, because, I mean, I you know. I don't know. Like, the dog might move because it's like, you know, move, and then it, like, dances to the beat because the, they trained it to. But it's not just, like, the sea lion just hears the beat, and it just starts grooving. You don't got to tell it anything. You know? Yeah, I, mm, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know that I believe it. It seems too convenient for sea lions. Well. They're That's just sea dogs anyway, so normal dogs should be able to, like, 
you know, like move a little, get a little funky. Yeah, maybe they just learn more out at sea. Maybe <laughs> Why they're would like that un- be the case? <laughs> Why would that be the mermaids? case? I, <laughs> you're right. I was going to say, <laughs> of course I have, but you're you're right. Like you're Under yeah. the sea. That's probably where they learned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm saying. Random fact of the day. Big news story of the day. Big news story of the day. We got a good one recommended. Oh my god, I'm in a whale's mouth. Lobster diver describes being swallowed by a humpback. I need to let you know, we talked about this story on Chaluminati. It's crazy. <laughs> this is a crazy story. You all need to hear this. All right. A little crossover here. Crossover. Hey. Commercial lobster diver who got caught in the mouth of a humpback whale off the coast of Cape Cod on Friday morning said he thought he was going to die. Michael Packard, 56, of Wellfleet, told WZTV after he was released from a Cape Cod hospital that he was about 45 feet or 14 meters deep in the waters uh, off of Prin- Provincetown when all of a sudden I felt this huge bump and everything went dark. He thought he'd been attacked by a shark, common in area waters but then realized he could not feel any teeth and he wasn't in any pain. Then I realized, oh my god, I'm in a whale's mouth, and he's that's trying so, to swallow me. <laughs> that's so wild. Like, it's, I don't know how to describe the fact that, like, this does not happen. Yeah. Most whales, <laughs> you know, maybe, like, killer whales where they, like, grab you and play with you, right? Because mm-hmm. they don't know any better. But whales don't, like, eat people. And most of the time, big whales like this... They have the like stuff in their mouth where they filter out the water and they just get all the krill or fish or whatever. So this dude being in a whale's mouth is insane. This simply does not happen. Yeah. Like, he, let's see, after that he thought to himself, okay, this is it. I'm finally, I'm going to die. His thoughts went to his wife and children. He estimates he was in the whale's mouth for about 30 seconds but continued to breathe because he still had his breathing apparatus in. Then the whale surfaced, shook its head, and spit him out and he was rescued by his crewmate in the surface boat. His sister, Cynthia Packard, originally told the Cape Cod Times that her brother broke a leg, but he said later that his legs are just bruised. Charles Stormy Mayo, (laughs) a senior scientist and whale expert at the Center for Coastal Studies in Provincetown, told the newspaper that such human whale encounters are rare. Humpbacks are not aggressive, and Mayo thinks it was an accidental encounter while the whale was feeding on fish, likely... Sand Lance. That dude can just this, tell people like, he got eaten by a whale. Here's the crazy thing. This is this is the thing that makes the story even crazier. I don't know what article you're on, but if you go down to the very bottom, the last paragraph I think should give it's in every article I read, the last paragraph is like another whole level to this story. Uh Mine, that's where mine ends. Hold on. If I go to this one. Oh, that's where it ends? All right. Well, let me just tell you another thing about this guy. All right. This dude, when he was younger, was in a plane crash in the jungle. He was, I think, one of the only, I don't know. It might have just been him, but I think a few other people survived. But most people died in the plane. He hurt himself terribly, and they survived in the jungle for several days. What the shit? This guy has led a very unlucky life. <laughs> oh, my God. So you just get eaten by a whale? You get <laughs> almost killed in a plane crash? That's what I'm saying. Maybe he, like, lives too dangerously. Maybe that's the problem. Like, I don't put myself out there to be eaten by a whale or end up in a jungle. Like, I don't know. <laughs> my God. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm good just staying home and... Playing with my <laughs> Warhammer. Everything toys. you say to me now, yeah, everything you say to me now <laughs> makes more sense after I heard that story. I was like, that dude was just minding his business and he got <laughs> Pinocchio'd. Straight up Pinocchio'd. Mama Mia. Yeah, that's uh that's quite the story. It is. All right. Well, that is it for us. Thank you so much for listening or watching however you're enjoying this podcast. Grendor, hit him with the socials. We got so many socials. We're on the Spotify, we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor Podcast. Go to YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor Podcast, all one word, then you can take off the podcast part, YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor, you can see all the funny animations. Also, uh, we got our own stuff. We're on YouTube Jesse Cox, YouTube Crendor, YouTube Warhammer Crendor, uh, Twitch Jesse Cox, Twitch Crendor. Uh, Facebook Jesse Cox, Facebook Crendor, Instagram Notorious Cox, Instagram Crendor was taken... 
and probably some other stuff there is out there. No other stuff. You know, it's there. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's it for us. We'll see you guys later. And as always, I'm going to blow into this uh, harmless harvest <laughs> bottle in hopes of summoning the sponsorships instead of ringing the bell. <laughs> I did not hear that. Did you blow? Yeah, it's definitely picking it up on the mic. You'll hear it in the audio recording. Oh, okay. All right. I hope so. Uh, To be continued.